welcome you to the first round of the NIT. A windy day on the banks of the Ohio River as the San Francisco Dons of the West Coast Conference have blown into town to take on the number two seeded Cincinnati Bearcats of the Big 12 Conference here at Fifth Third Arena. Eric Rothman alongside Mike O'Donnell ready to go for the last tip off of round number one as we take a look at the Cincinnati Indiana State quadrant of the bracket. 23 and 10, 11 and 5 in West Coast Conference play. Cincinnati 20 and 14 overall with a 7 and 11 record in Big 12 play. As we get set for round number one of the NIT. And Mike, you were saying earlier, you really feel like this maybe is the best first round matchup in the entire tournament given the quality of these two teams, both potential victors of the entire thing. And both play very different styles of basketball. You could say elite for both these teams. San Francisco has an elite half court offense when it comes to efficiency. Cincinnati has an elite defense. Cincinnati defeated West Virginia and number 16 Kansas in the Big 12 tournament before falling to Baylor in their final game of the season. Now moving into postseason action, Seamus Lukosius, the hot shooting three-point sniper, averaging 11 points per game, this time backing into the lane against Malik Thomas. San Francisco without Ryan Beasley, their star freshman who's really been playing well down the stretch. He's out with an illness. Bandago gets the lob from Lukosius. One thing for Lukosius that goes highly underrated when talking about his game. He's an excellent passer. Over three assists a game for Lukosius. So Cincinnati's so worried about the drive that on that pick and pop, it's wide open action for San Francisco. Simas Lukosius answers with a three of his own, the first triple for the Bearcats. Good sign for Lukosius, who was just one of six from three in their last game in that loss versus Baylor. San Francisco has made four shots in this game, all four of them from three-point range. Lukosius this time in the corner. He's a rhythm shooter. Off balance at the free throw line, five in a row for Seamus Lukosius with seven points for San Francisco. He's been that kind of quote-unquote X-factor for San Francisco this season. He's all West Coast Conference honorable mention honors at the end of the regular season. Check that, nine points for Duedo Newberry, the junior from London. The answer from the freshman, Jizzle James. Future of this program specifically, you know, you were talking to him earlier today about the backcourt of Thomas and James and the accompaniment of the sophomore Dan Skilling. So a lot of room to grow here in Cincinnati. Uh, there's no question about it. And that man right there is a huge part of it. Seamus Lukosius rips his second three, coming off a little bit of a pin down. That was a point of emphasis and shoot around this afternoon, finding Lukosius off of those shots. This is my favorite shot for Lukosius, coming off the of pin downs. It's a good screen. He gets his feet set. You can see the backspin on the ball is perfect. I love his form. He's got good energy transfer. That's his most efficient shot out of all the shots that he takes coming off of screening action. He's got a 72% effective field goal percentage. If I was the point guard of Cincinnati, I'd be wanting to run pin down action for Lukosius as often as I possibly can. They almost got him again. Tried to get open with the side dribble, and he did. Simas Lukosius got the pin down screen from John Newman. You saw it too. Pin down, that's his shot. Lukosius again. Four for four from three for Simas Lukosius. And three out of the four of those made threes have come down of pin down single screen action. So that is what they do. Lukosius bumped off his line, spinning, finding a lane, and foul. Nice patience, good footwork from Lukosius. Those aren't easy plays to make. You know, Cincinnati might wind up really looking at this stretch of the past few minutes here, Mike, and really not capitalizing on the fact that Malik Thomas, that's trust in your best player. Not a lot of coaches would make that decision that quickly. So both Mobo and Thomas back in. Mobo with the three fouls, Thomas with two. So Gerlison rolling the dice a little bit with Mobo out there. Now James out with it. Numbers for Cincinnati. 
Lukosius, corner three. That will get the Bearcats fans going. And what's the difference between that made three from Lukosius and the one he just missed? That one was catch and shoot. The one he missed was off the bounce. I was going to say the difference is that it went in. There you go. And we got a little juice here at the Fifth Third Arena. Catch and shoot for Lukosius. He's been big time tonight. And Beasley. He's up to eight points now. Dave nice Thomas blowbars. in the corner. Lukosius another three. His sixth in seven attempts. Struggling with the turnovers, also dealing with Mobo with those four fouls, although he's out there in the middle of that matchup zone they've got going on. Lukosius again. Oh, Career high. Seven threes for Simas Lukosius. And San Francisco wants another timeout. Oh, no, excuse me, in Cincinnati to take a timeout. Lukosius is nothing short of unstoppable tonight. That's not just three, that's four to five feet beyond the three-point line. He is lights out at Fifth Third Arena. Wow! 25 points on eight of 12 from the floor, seven of eight from three. Front court where you're not getting across the back court closer to the three-point line. Oh, lips out. Rebounded by Mobo. San Francisco down three. 12 seconds to play. Williams, baseline, Hammer kick out. Action. Thomas for three. He ties it. Seven seconds to go. Cincinnati's got timeouts to use. And Bandego missed the free throw. And Malik Thomas ties the ball game. And he's got 26 points. And now Cincinnati, a chance to win it. But closing out games, Mike, has been an issue for Cincinnati all year. For Cincinnati's guards, it's about a half a second that comes off the clock. So you got maybe four or five dribbles here before you got to make a play. And we're, we're just, we're getting another time out here because you're trying to see how each team is setting up. Yeah, San Francisco takes this last time out, 30 second time out. Cincinnati, San Francisco, winner will play Bradley, Indiana State, Minnesota already advancing into the second round. Lukosius to inbound. Mobo's in there. He's coming out to guard Skillings. Four and a half seconds to go. Cincinnati a chance to win it. The inbound to Jizzle James, the freshman. Here's Jizzle. Step back for the win. Well short. And we're going to overtime. What a comeback for San Francisco down the stretch, Mike O'Donnell. Free basketball in the postseason. Nothing better. Another overtime game today in the NIT. The games have been awesome all night long in the NIT. They went to a little ghost screen. The first thing they tried to do is they actually tried to get Skillings on a lob action. San Francisco, meanwhile, they haven't had a field goal in the last four minutes, but hasn't mattered. They've gotten it done at the free throw line. Nine seconds to shoot. Here's Mobo. There's the two-man game. Wants a handoff, finds Williams for three. Short. Oh, wow. and San Francisco gets the rebound. San Francisco has just out-hustled Cincinnati here in the overtime period. Not going to foul yet. 10 to shoot. 20 seconds on the game clock. Mobo blocked by Lukosius. Newman rips down the rebound. Final 15 seconds. Jizzled James. Cincinnati has a timeout if they want it. James off, lost it off of his hip. 10 to go and a timeout taken. Surprised it took that long to take the timeout, Mike. Now, you had some momentum in semi-transition. I understand what Coach Miller was doing there. He thought that James had an opportunity to drive. And then once James fumbled the ball, you call a timeout and secure the possession. So eight seconds exactly. A two ties it, send us to double overtime. A three will win it. The way you draw up offensive sets coming out of this timeout is you have it layered. You don't just draw up one offensive set for one shot. 
you want to layer it. Usually with a player like Lukosius and a shooter, can you find him early with action running off a pin down or a stagger, something to get him in catch and shoot opportunity. But that's one part of it. That's one part of the layer. The second part goes to who's the next guy. To me, if you don't have Lukosius, if you could use him as a decoy and you've got Jizzle James, even though he's a freshman, been great tonight in ISO one-on-one. -on -one. Can you if you can get Lukosius, great. If you can't, James is plan B. Cincinnati still with one timeout remaining. Don't have to be in panic mode after the first pass, Eric. Two to tie, three to win. Round one of the NIT comes down to the final eight seconds of overtime. Newman to inbound for Cincinnati. Bandago. Not the guy you want up top. Lukosius for the win. No! Lukosius put Cincinnati up one. Three seconds to go. San Francisco, no timeouts. Mobo misses. And Lukosius beats the buzzer. And Cincinnati advances. Cincinnati blew a nine-point lead with two minutes to go in regulation. Malik Thomas hit a three to send it to overtime. And Seamus Lukosius hits his eighth three-pointer of the game, a career high. And Cincinnati wins it by one. They got what they wanted. And what you and I talked about, Eric, they got Lukosius off a pin down. A great screen from skate open, rhythm catch and shoot three. Perfectly executed by Cincinnati to win the game. Wow, what a game. Cincinnati advances to play Bradley. We'll get a determination of that at the fifth third arena. Eric Roth and Mike O'Donnell now joined by Simas Lukosius. 28 points, Simas, 8 of 10 shooting from three, including the game winner in overtime. Walk us through the final play of the game. Um, final play was something we, we put in actually in the offseason, but we never ran it the whole year.